I did one more jump, but I only did it because I felt sort of morally obligated to do more than two jumps for the crowd. It's a bizarre thing. There's the list for the final, the men's triple jump. You can see there, Quesada of Cuba, one of the men to look out for. And the next part of the list, you can see Jonathan Edwards, who is now the world record holder in this discipline and was the furthest, second furthest, I should say, in qualifying. I think it's quite cool that um, Steve Ovette was commentating on this event. He was always one of my heroes. I remember watching him versus Seb in 1980, and I, I was very much a, a Steve Ovette fan rather than a Seb fan in terms of who I wanted to win in Moscow. And, and to have him commentating on this was uh, quite something. There is the world record holder now, Jonathan Edwards in the triple jump. Clearly the firm favourite, but Steve, we saw some excellent jumping from various Caribbean athletes, didn't we, in the qualifying? Yelvis Casada of Cuba, and then that uh, national record for Dominica by Jerome Romain. I remember the wind was, was helpful, uh, getting out there, and that's always a big thing for a jumper, um, to see where the wind's blowing. And so I knew the conditions were good. I was as scared as you like. I thought I could mess it up. There was no guarantee I was going to win this thing, in my mind. And almost, although I'd broken the world record that year already, had I not won the world championships, I felt that my season would be regarded as a failure and I would regard it as a failure, even though it wouldn't have been. So I felt a huge amount of pressure. And of course, I'd never been into a major championship, expected to win, like more so than probably any other athlete, and not just expected to win, but to break a world record as well. So I was petrified. So alongside that being petrified, there was also an incredible sense of, I could jump a massive distance here. You know, I'd already jumped 18 meters 43 wind assisted. I jumped a world record in Salamanca maybe two or three weeks beforehand, 1798, which was much less than I knew I was capable of. So there was also, you know, below that fear, which was the most dominant emotion, a real sense of excitement. I mean, I had very few thoughts in my head when I was about to, to run and jump, but it was pretty much just go for it. Um, I, you know, I would get very nervous in the lead up to it, but this this was the kind of moment I would always come up, I would be changed, ready to go as the jumper before me went down the run up for his jump. And as soon as he went, I'd be on the run up and I would be, I think almost empty minded, but just, I'm glad the waiting is over and I'm ready to do this. Um, and I hope it's good. <laughs> um, I, you know, I, I didn't know, but I mean, you can see the look on my face. I was incredibly focused. And that season, every time I stood on the runway, I jumped a long way. Um, so as far as it was possible, I knew the chances were good. Um, and I just wanted to get underway. Jonathan Edwards, the world record holder, about to take his first jump in the competition. The lead held at 17 metres 19 by Jovis Casada. Very fast on the runway, that great spring again. Oh, oh, my, look at that, that's close to the world record. Yeah, it's a lot of relief there. I mean, it's a celebration, but there's a huge amount of relief. Um, I think what strikes me looking at it is, is how fast and flat I was. I think I had so much speed on the run-up that it just took me much more in a horizontal and a vertical direction when I took off because I was so fast. Um, uh, you know, people have likened it to a skipping stone and, and these jumps on this day were very much like that. And I think as a result, my hop and step were perhaps shorter than I'd done in lots of other jumps. But that was a function of the speed. The, the, the adrenaline was there, um, you know, and I was, I don't know, 5% faster than I'd probably been at any other time during my career and certainly that season. Um, and that's what gave the jump to that flat trajectory. The judges taking a time, making sure of the measurement being right. And Edwards waits. I mean, there's this interminable wait now. What a time to produce your best. The biggest occasion of all, the World Championships. They're taking a long time to measure it. Is that significant? They've got to be very careful with it indeed. Undoubtedly, this is one of the greatest jumps we've ever seen. And then they kept on showing the close-ups um, of the, the marker board. And it was pretty clear that it was, you know, not just over 18 metres, but a long way over 18 metres, and that it was going to be a world record. Um, despite the somewhat nervous look. I, just anticipation, I think, more than nerve at this point. Actually, we see this. The crowd see the result before me. I hear this big cheer, and I'm looking around to see where the result is. 18 metres, 16, a fantastic new world record for Jonathan Edwards. The first world record of these championships, and one of the great performances in the history of athletics. A barrier-breaking performance 
adding no less than 18 centimetres to his own world record. Absolutely fantastic! He's destroyed the opposition on the first jump. Well, he was threatening to do it all year. People were waiting for it. And he didn't disappoint, did he? The first time up, bang! Launched himself into that pit. Absolutely. He's checking his coach. Did I do it right? He said, yes, I think, Jonathan, you did that one right. <laughs> so, yeah, the commentator knows him poor often. Bang! He's running out of runway. They'll have to lengthen the runway if this man jumps any further. Look at that. That's a great shot. That is the disappearance of the old world record. It's, it's almost like somebody else, I guess. It's like, you know, from the old um, stiff, achy man that I am now to that person who could jump that far. I mean, I probably couldn't jump nine metres now. It's, it's quite something to watch. There's a huge amount of luck where you are on the board. There really is. I mean, you can train and train and train, but once you get into a, a major championships, all sorts of different conditions, you know, you've got all that adrenaline uh, and there is a lot of luck involved. I mean, a year later in Atlanta, when I was the red hot favorite, I had two fouls in the final uh, and I was immediately on the back foot uh, and only just made it through to the final three jumps with my third jump. Uh, and that could have happened here quite, quite easily. I could have just nicked the plasticine put some pressure on myself, then foul the second. So with a technical event, and certainly the triple jump, when you've got the three phases, as well as the takeoff, there's there's lots of places for things to go wrong. Um, and that's, in a sense, why I was so relieved. No matter how good a form you're in, there's always something that can go wrong um, in a technical event, or in any event, in any sporting event, particularly when you're looking at something as technical as the triple jump. Um, so no, I mean, there was, there was no holding back, there was no, um, let's get a safe one, it was just run and jump and um, hope it's good. All I can remember, I guess, is the feeling of I'm not done yet in this competition. Uh, and normally, um, once I jumped a, a distance like that, I'd finish. The adrenaline would be gone. I'd more than likely won the competition. Uh, you know, I'd broken the world records. Um, so I, I still felt like there was more to do and the adrenaline was still up and maybe I did feel like potentially somebody could have jumped a huge jump um, there I mean I think Conley was in the competition that's my friend Rogel from uh, Tel Aviv we're great friends we did a lot of training together and it was fantastic for me actually he was in the competition because you had the Cuban guys and then you had the Arkansas guys the Conley the Brian Wellman remain and there was these gangs and I would have been on my own without Rogel being there. And we were like a, a team. And of course, for me, Conley was a bit of a hero. I watched him jump in Barcelona, 1817, wind assisted. And for me, he was the outstanding triple jumper. Although he wasn't the world record holder, he was the outstanding triple jumper of all time, hugely talented. And it was always a bit weird for me to break the world record rather than him. It felt very, very odd because I always was in awe of him and, and his abilities. Uh, but it was nice to have Rogel there because he was able to support me. And I think without him, I'd have felt quite vulnerable. I also remember buying some sunglasses at the uh, the airport in Gothenburg because uh, I didn't actually have any and have any deals. Uh, and I just didn't want the athletes to see the other athletes to see the fear in my eyes when I was getting warmed up and in the cool room. So it was a little bit of a, a kind of disguise, if you like, to, to hide what I was feeling inside. What can you say? This man has already, I believe, won the competition and quite rightly could have taken the, the second round jump and relaxed. But I think he knows, like everybody else, that he's in the form of his life. And it would be wrong to miss an opportunity of giving that a full try. Listening to the crowd. Plenty of British fans in the crowd. I'm always amazed at how many British flags there are here when I go and travel around the world and compete in World Championships, Olympic Games, European Championships. Uh, the British Supporters Club are fantastic. Those who come just because they love athletics. Um, and it is, it's, it's fabulous. It really is. And as I say, you can see there in the crowd loads of British flags. Obviously, Gothenburg's quite accessible from the UK. Um, and it was really good to have them there. But I think the Swedes were really on my side. And, and there was a sense of, of athletics fans 
anticipating a world record, seeing something special. And it's not often you go into an event where you think, goodness, the world record's likely to go. And certainly not in a field event. Um, so the whole, the whole thing had a very special feeling, not just for, for British fans, but I think for athletics fans. I was so much more relaxed, obviously, this time. And, and as I, I think I mentioned a bit earlier, there, there's a smile on my face. We'll see it when it gets there, when I'm ready to jump. And I sort of point my finger, and it's like, right, okay, just let's just celebrate and enjoy this moment because you'll probably never have another one like it. And, and I didn't. Um, and this, this is this is it now. It's a little point of the finger, it's a little smile. It's like, right, I was ready to go. I get quite emotional watching it, actually. And the moment that I knew it was further, was, or it was better, was during the step, because there was a moment when I just had to wait and then put my foot on the ground. And you can just see it, it feathers a little bit, that front foot, it sort of goes out and then comes back and then goes out again. Because there's just that moment in time when I had to stabilize, not put my foot down, because the transfer of the, of, from the hop to the step was better. And as soon as I landed, I knew it was a world record. I knew it was further. That's why I just stood up and sort of shrugged my shoulders as if to say, that's another record. You just see that little feather there. I mean, I still had 11 centimeters to spare on the board. So if somebody does ever break my world record, I'll say, actually, I was at 1840 from takeoff to landing. So, <laughs> rather than 1829. Edwards at the moment is in a different league. There's the flags flying. Was that one all right, he said to his coach? I think about it now, to land in the pit and know that that is a world record already. And there's almost, I don't know if I'd call it embarrassment, but it's like, yeah, that's two world records in, in 20 minutes. And uh, you, you can see just generally the reaction is very different. Even though it's a further jump, it's a very different reaction to, to the first uh, jump. Um, because it, it wasn't about nerves then or relief. It, yeah, I just, I knew it was further. I, yeah, I guess there's a calmness about this that there wasn't in the first one. It's the first time I've ever heard a crowd clapping after an athlete's jump. 18-16 in the first round. 18-29! been involved in athletics all my life. I've never seen two world records go as easily as that and so quickly to one man. And what I also knew in that instant, because I'd looked at this beforehand, is that 1829 was 60 feet. So I'd, or well, 60 feet and quarter of an inch. So I'd broken the metric barrier of 18 meters and the uh, imperial barrier of 60 feet, uh, which funnily enough was the um, front page of track and field news, 60 feet goes. Um, so I was very aware of those two, you know, like the four minute mile, the triple jump, 18 meters and 60 feet, both going at the same time. And that's me telling everybody to get out of the way because Brian Wellman was after me because he was in the hunt for the medals. And the whole competition was just sort of hijacked by photographers and media and whatever else. And I, I remember having to get them out of the way to allow Brian the freedom to do his jump because I didn't want to mess up his competition. I think there's always a sense that I can't quite believe it's happened to me. I mean, you grow up as a young kid looking at, you know, your heroes on television, maybe you're lucky enough to go and see them in the stadium and you feel very ordinary yourself. And then when you're actually doing something that is extraordinary, it's hard to equate the two. Um, but I think I almost appreciate it more now than I did at the time. I mean, I was at that, you know, I was in the cut and thrust of my athletics career. I was in great shape and you kind of almost took that all, I took it all in my stride, I guess. I mean, I enjoyed, don't get me wrong, I enjoyed it and it was fantastic. But I just don't think I appreciated ju uh, just how amazing it was. I mean, I'm just sitting here now and I am, I am quite emotional about it. And whenever I see it um, or have to talk about it, it's like, did that really happen to me? Um, and, you know, to, to, to choose something to do in life and to, categorically be the best there ever was as a world record holder that nobody's done that thing better than you ever is it's a bit mind-blowing to be honest but yeah it feels so far away from who I am now and, and my life and it's um yeah it's yeah 
I can't quite believe it ha this happened to me. It's the truth of the matter. I really can't. I, I, the answer is yes, I thought I would break it again. And the answer is no, I didn't think it would last this long. Um, I, so, the, the, the big thing about 95 was that my technique was outstanding and the balance that I had through the phases, which was brought about through me changing my technique and using this sort of double arm action rather than a single arm action, um, gave me a much better position, particularly in the last phase. So my last phase, I think, in Gothenburg was nearly seven metres. In fact, it might have just have been over seven metres. Whereas in subsequent years, when my technique wasn't as good, I would hop and step a long way, but my jump was very short because my body position wasn't as good. And I think without my technique having not fallen apart, but not been as good in 95, I think perhaps I would have broken the world record because in subsequent years I was faster and I was stronger. But I just didn't have the technical package. Um, in terms of it lasting as long, I mean, it's, I mean, athletics is interesting, isn't it? Because you look at, mostly on the track that, that a lot of records have gone, even records you thought perhaps would never be broken, Michael Johnson's 200 and 400 metres, for example, obviously, you know, that's bolt notwithstanding, given what he's done. Um, the, the, you know, the, 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 the five, I suppose the five and 10 lasted quite a long time until this recent spate of, of record breaking with the Keeley. Uh, but there are a number of records from the 90s which have stood the test of time, and obviously Mike Powell, in the long jump, you've got Sotomayor in the high jump, Zelezny in the javelin, Kevin Young, 400 hurdles. Um, you know, there's, there's there are quite a few from the 90s. I, I think it was a magical era for athletics in the 90s, the 80s and 90s. Yeah, I, mean, I don't think I was ever completely relaxed until it was all over. And certainly Brian Wellman had uh, a penchant for the theatrical. So even when he landed his jump, it looked like he'd broken a world record, but in truth, he was three quarters of a meter behind. Um, but that was fine for you. Um, so I, I was always watching, and then there was Casada, the Cuban, who I thought maybe would do something, um, although in the end didn't. Um, and Conley, you know, I was always nervous of Conley, even though he wasn't in his best shape. Um, I did decide to take one more jump, but only really because I felt like I owed it to the crowd. They were kind of waiting for me to jump, and I perhaps didn't quite, I wasn't quite used to the situation of, of being somebody that the crowd had come to watch. And so I felt an obligation that I had to jump, despite the fact that I had broken two world records. And that was probably enough for one day. I find I'm interested to see this, because I always watch the two world records, but I've never seen this again, I don't think. I mean, in my mind now, I'm thinking, this is a complete waste of time. I'm not going to jump very far. I was always very aware of my, my body and my mind and whether I was up for, for jumping or not. I mean, it was just a horrible jump. It was just, <laughs> yeah. There was no, yeah. I shouldn't have jumped that jump, but hey ho. <laughs> I don't think it's for the day. I can't quite believe in it, it's just so amazing. The funny thing about this um, medal ceremony, which we'll see, is that I think the Queen was going to put the medal on me and I was ready for her to shake my hand. So my hand's out to shake a hand because she's got both hands on the medal ribbon. And so I'm left kind of hanging with my, my, my hand out for a handshake. Um, it was quite a cool podium, I thought, as well. I like the way you can you, you, you run around. Um, it was well designed, and then the, and then the medals uh, have got those sort of that air bubble in the middle, so you could take back a little bit of Gothenburg with you, a little bit of Sweden. Yeah. I think it's just a bit of disbelief, really. <laughs> and so I never, I never, really, you never, I never watch these bits. You always see the jumps, particularly the second one, but never really all of this and. That was an incredible day.
it was the start of that phase of my career when I was, was the world number one and, uh, and a kind of a dominant athlete on the world stage. Whereas up until that point, I'd been trying to break through. And then Sydney, there was like a relief that I'd won the Olympics, which is what, you know, having broken the world record that I expected to be able to do and people expected to be able to do and anticipated me doing. So the relief, the sense of relief um, for Sydney was huge. And it wasn't a great jump. It was an amazing night. But, you know, I was very much a secondary uh, event on that Magic Monday in Sydney. Whereas this, this, this evening in Gothenburg, I was the main event. But for an experience, there was nothing like Gothenburg as, as a night, two world records, the response of the crowd, the, that kind of, that breakthrough moment for me and my emotions. You know, I was a much more knowing, battle-hardened, probably slightly cynical <laughs> human being by the time I got to Sydney. There was a freshness about Gothenburg, which, you know, you can never repeat. I mean, once it's gone, that, that freshness is gone, it's gone. You can't recreate it. You know, I, I could have gone on to break the world record again, but I don't think it would have ever felt quite like it did in Gothenburg. You know, first world title and the whole build up to it and the focus on on me and the triple jump. It, it was just, yeah, and the stuff of dreams really is and beyond dreams, to be honest. <laughs>